You know, Gandhiji once said that we are all equal. And that is exactly how I chose to live my life. With this personal goal of mine, I focused on not how much money I was making, but how I was going to bring the awareness of my cuisine and my culture up to the rest of the world. It was so important for me that everybody understood that Indian food is as complex as any French cooking or any Italian cooking. And yes, butter chicken is tasty, <laughs> but there is more to Indian food than just butter chicken and chicken tikka masala. <clears throat> and that was a personal goal of mine. I truly believe that adversity creates a common bond between all the people. We have all faced some type of adversity in our lives, in our careers, either emotionally or financially. It is truly a humbling experience to fall down, accept it, get back and rebuild the areas of our lives and the organizations that have not worked properly. This is when I was 20 pounds less. <laughs> when I first opened my restaurant up in 1994, in the beginning, $100 was my breakaway point. If I sold $100 a day, I knew that I was going to survive in that small 16-seat restaurant. And sometimes, I would sell $98 of food in, in the whole day. And I would go in and ring in two dollars of naan <laughs> just to feel good. <laughs> that I was not just, not just a good chef, but I was also a good businessman because at the end, cash flow is really, really important. <laughs> I still think about those days sometimes and it humbles me or when I drive by that old 16-seat restaurant where Steve used to come all the time and it was, it was such a small restaurant, a table of four was a big deal. <laughs> Struggling to break even, I had other issues. I had issues about venting in the kitchen because my neighbors were complaining about Indian smells, Indian flavors that were not, they were not really happy about. So my parents, who had come from India, would make a pot of Viji's family chicken curry, and they would bring it all the way from Richmond on Granville Street, and they never told me till the end that everybody would look at them in the bus <laughs> and say, who are these weird Indians <laughs> carrying chicken curry between their legs from Richmond all the way down to Granville and Broadway. So I thank my mother and my father from the bottom of my heart for doing that. <laughs> Challenges seem to keep appearing. Uh, yet, I did not want to give up. I could not give up. Every day when a customer walked in, it was most important for me that I made sure that I made that person feel welcomed as if they were coming to my house, that they could have really delicious food. And that was most important for me personally as a chef and as, as a restaurant owner. We chose to be creative by creating a menu that was other than butter chicken and chicken tikka masala. So sometimes people would come in and say, but well, where's butter chicken? And I would look at them and say, you know what, what, what pancakes are to a white person? That's what butter chicken is to me. <laughs> and the idea of creating this menu was as if I have come to your house and you make me a delicious soup 
And as long as it's tasty, who bloody cares what it's called as long as there is love and passion put behind it. That was the most important part for me. Now as widgets became better known, we began to see regulars, people start asking to make reservations. And from the very beginning I said no to reservations. And the reason was I believed that the teachers that teach our kids and a nurse that goes to Rwanda and saves lives or a nurse that keeps us healthy is as important as an actor or somebody who is wealthy. I believed in equality. I wanted everybody to be equal. That was the most important part for me. And that is how I wanted everybody treated equally. Whether you had a cup of chai or you had a nice bottle of wine, I was going to show you the same respect and love. And that was the most important factor for me personally. By doing things differently than everyone else, we still expected greatness. We created equality. People understood that they could not just come and just because they were wealthy or somebody was an actor that they were any bigger VIPs than the person who's a nurse. You know, when my father comes, he actually waits like everybody else does. <laughs> you know, when my wife comes, she actually gets bumped down the list. <laughs> because she's not a paying customer. This is uh, Miru. One of the most important things that happened to me is marrying my wife Miru. Her tenacity, her hard work, and partnership are a fundamental reason why Vidges is, and Vidges restaurant and a group of companies is where it is today. Many people told us, you're crazy to be working with the same woman as you're sleeping with. <laughs> but the most important part was, in spite of all our disagreements and our issues, we respect each other. That was the most important part for both of us. My ladies in the kitchen, they are my backbone. They are incredibly hardworking. Miru's ability to foster and lead our Punjabi kitchen staff, who are the backbone of our kitchen, and to be able to bridge the gap between the two cultures is really a great accomplishment. We run our kitchen and our companies with very little hierarchy. There is no executive chef in the kitchen. All the employees have the opportunity to share their ideas, whether it is about recipes or serving. And we provide the best service possible to our customers. Our employees are our family, and we really take great care of our family. My personal creativity comes from going to India, gallivanting. I go to India every year. We go to people's homes, learn how to cook, learn different spice combinations, bring them back, and try to incorporate them in our restaurants. And that's how my personal creativity comes. My personal creativity comes from doing a cooking show and actually physically cooking in the kitchen. Good food should not only be served with a lot of passion and love, but with a lot of humility. Under the leadership of Mike Bernardo of Vidges, 
our front of the house thrives with a sense of unity and pride. Unlike most restaurants, we do not assign any tables to our servers. We work and expect every server to run the food, uh, fill out waters, even clean the toilets when the time comes. And that to me was equality. You know, Gandhiji once made his wife clean the washrooms and she really got upset at him and she said, I am Gandhi's wife, I shouldn't have to do it. And that's when he said, Kasturba, we are all equal at the end. And so those are the same principles that I followed with the servers to say it doesn't matter, we go and we'll tidy up the washrooms and that was very important for us. Every day my staff provides superior service, great hospitality to the customers, higher standards of widgets, which I feel are the greatest strengths. Lamp obstacles. <laughs> I believe that's what makes Indian food so unique. It's great diversity and variety. Whether you take a garam masala from northern India or you take a spice from southern India, the most beautiful part about our cooking is that it is a democracy. It's a democracy of food. A little bit of this and a little bit of that creates really delicious flavors on your plate. Miru and I have tried to be creative when it comes to introducing new dishes, either in the restaurants or on our packaged meals. And then we try to work and make them as approachable as possible for the people so that we do not compromise on the quality or accessibility I want every person to enjoy Indian food once a week in their homes, whether you're cooking it or you're actually physically taking some food to enjoy it. And that was the goal and the mission. Through the word of mouth, our community, my friends and supporters have helped me spread this message. That Indian food is more than just an average takeout food. It can be elevated and explored as a serious cuisine. I've never spent any marketing dollars promoting Vijay's restaurants. You will never see an ad for Vijay's restaurant. It has been purely through the community, the farmers that I work with, the artisans that have created the bowls and the lanterns, our customers, my support. And with all that, I've built a democracy, a democracy of food in my restaurant. It is by living your passion and truly believing that your friends and your own creative gifts are in for you to believe and support. We live in such a beautiful city. Three most important factors of any city. We have the bounty of the ocean, sustainable bounty of the ocean. We have Fraser Valley that produces beautiful produce. And we have Okanagan Valley that produces delicious wines three most important factors to create a city that is a great food-centric city. We have it. We must preserve it. We as chefs must represent our country, our city where we live in. And I'm certainly proud to say that I do my utmost best to be the best ambassador of this city.
I am deeply humbled by the attention I receive, and on behalf of Miru and our team, I hope I have represented them well in sharing my collective passion and sharing a passion of food and culture. I believe this is what unifies us all, that inside each of us is the burning desire to strive to be the best people we can and create something that leaves a lasting legacy that we and our loved ones can be proud of. I thank Mark, I thank Creative Morning, I thank everybody for coming. Namaste. Okay, we're going to ask questions. This is this is your chance. This is this is Vikram Vidge uh, naked before you, um, to uh, metaphorically. This is getting out of control. It's my fault. Um, I have the first question, if you don't mind, sir. Yes, sir. When you, you are you are a lifelong foodie. I mean, you are a food, passionate food advocate and lover. When do you remember the first moment, the first flavor, the first experience that when when you realized that food was important to you, or that 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 you know that moment? Do I need this? Do I need this? Okay. More than becoming a foodie, the reason why the restaurant was called Vidges and not Vikrams or any any other, or not Taj Mahal. <laughs> or cuisine of India or anything else was because when I was growing up in India my grandfather who um, who was a loving man but he was a serious alcoholic he would drink a bottle of scotch every night and smoked two packets of cigarettes every day and every night, when he was drunk, he would sit me on his lap and say to me, when you grow up, I want you to open up an Indian restaurant, and I want to be the bartender of that <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> and the idea was that as an Indian grandfather, I would not charge him for alcohol and he would be hammered and drunk for free <laughs> because now he had to buy that bottle of scotch. And at that time he wouldn't and he said, you cook. He knew that I loved how to cook. So ever since as a young child, I wanted to open up a restaurant for him. It's not that I wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer and I just wasn't smart enough to become, I mean, that's true, I wasn't smart enough <laughs> to become a doctor or a lawyer but ever since as a young child, I wanted to be a chef and wanted to open up a restaurant for him. So I think at that moment, I realized that I loved food. I loved everything about it. Uh, I mean, I'm, there's nothing low fat about me here. <laughs> and uh, then I knew that I wanted to be a chef. So it is, uh, the widges is to honor him actually. And even in the first cookbook, it was written there that uh, Vidges, the name Vidges was to honor my uh, father's father, and which was my grandfather. Okay. Okay, who has a question? Who hit the back? Okay. Please, please speak slowly. English is not my mother tongue. <laughs> uh, my name is Kathleen Mazako, I'm a volunteer here with Creative Mornings, and you seem to have always done things your own idiosyncratic way, and that's what's made you successful. So I'm wondering what role the cooking school actually played in your life and success. Did it really matter to go? It, it did. It did, because it doesn't matter how good of a musician you are, you must still know what notes to play, how to play those notes. You must know the fundamentals of cooking. You must know what braising and searing and adding your spices to it. 
It's like an artist. You, you have these spices in front of you and your, your pot is your canvas. And you can add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that. But you must understand the fundamentals of cooking. What does happen with the meats when you, when you sear them and how, much, how long should you rest them? What happens with those spices? The creativity of taking, taking that dish and bringing it to a different level is purely a, a personal thing. But you must, everybody, I always say, you must work for really good chefs or, or sommeliers and wine people. You must hone your skills under good, whether you're a graphic artist, whether you're a musician, you must play with the people who have achieved and who have the knowledge. Those fundamental of, of learning is the most important part. Then you can build on it however you want it. But you must understand and you must have gone through it. How can somebody come to me and say, I think you should have more acidity to this dish when I as a chef, if I taste it and I think it's tasty, I'm not going to sit there and change it. You, you, you have to have the confidence and the confidence comes by having worked at great restaurants. I mean, I worked for John Bishop and Rain City Grill, top, top restaurants, high-end restaurants, and they were focused restaurants and they did what they wanted to do. Does that, does that answer that question? Oh. Uh, I was just wondering, do you ever get creativity blocks? And if so, how do you overcome it? Or what do you, do you have any exercises if you just sit and wait? Or what do you, what's your process? You know, as I said, Indian food or food in general is such a large democracy that you can try so many different things. Sometimes you, you hit, a, hit a point where it's like, I'm not quite understanding what should I do here and where do I do it? And then you take a little break from it. It's a little bit writing a book. You know, you, everything doesn't flow all the time. Sometimes you just let it go and you, you come back to it in, in a few days or you see it some other restaurants or you go traveling somewhere and you say, let's say you're cooking with goat, for example, and you say, oh, well, I, I just don't know what to do with goat. And then you just take your time and then you go somewhere and somebody's done a beautiful goat stew, for example, and you're like, oh, yeah, I, I should do this. So you learn from that. I, that's why I go to India every year for a month, and I just go and I go to people's homes. I learn how to cook because Indian women in the kitchen in India are unbelievable cooks, and they, are, they haven't gotten any accolades. It's no different than a, a Jewish grandmother or a, 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 you know, a Chinese lady that makes delicious food. She just doesn't have the accolades but she's a brilliant cook. So when I go there and I learn, I don't go there as a chef, I go there as a student. I, I tell her, show me what you're doing, and then she teaches me this, and I learn, and I'm like, okay, this is awesome. So that's how I get rid of my creative block. This side. Uh -oh. Don't do that. Um, two of the members in our group are from Seattle and I pointed out that you have a restaurant opening there and other members of our group noted you now have the food cart and uh, uh, I think another new restaurant coming to Vancouver and we were wondering are you enjoying the entrepreneurial challenges that these new endeavors are uh, probably introdu being introduced to you again? Well, um, let me start saying, you know, initially when I first started talking, I think the, the most important thing for me was to bring the awareness of my cuisine and my culture up. It's everything that we do is in that path, that final goal of bringing. I'm telling you this, I am fine if I never have any money. I could be a homeless guy on the street with my cart going by and if somebody turns around and says, you know that, that guy who's, that homeless guy who just walked by, he single-handedly changed the way Indian food is perceived in this country? <laughs> that to me is far more important than me driving a fancy car or anything like that. So the path of being there to make the food awareness is what we are doing. Uh, Shanik is a Miru venture. She's an American, always wanted to have a restaurant in the States. 
So it's a Miru venture. Obviously, I support her 100% in this, but it's a Miru venture. She will go down and do that. Anything else that I'm doing in the city, whether it's a food cart uh, or uh, the new restaurants that I'm opening up, are all within the food business, basically. So I, uh, it's not that, do I enjoy it? Yeah. Jeez, I love juggling five balls at the same time. You know, I, love, I do love stress. I do actually thrive on it. To be honest with you, I do love it. I thrive on it. I love that go, 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 you know, keep going. I, I just have always been. I have serious ADD, so I'm always like moving and shaking and... Let's get someone from that side. And as I walk over, um, years ago, not long ago, Vikram told me a story of how he was offered a very, very lucrative opportunity to open a restaurant in Las Vegas. Vegas. Who And he refused. Integrity. Yeah, but why would you go to Vegas? Like, for... um, our group... I, mean, I mean, even the whores there are expensive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, he said I could be dirty, so I became dirty. Okay, my question might be a little boring after that. Um, we, our group was just talking about that you have a theory around the seven year uh, business cycle and we wondered if you could expand on that or, or talk a little bit about that. In our restaurant business, they normally say, and this is coming from the bankers and from restaurant um, owners, is that if five restaurants open in 2012, Within the first two years, three restaurants will close down, either because of lack of cash flow or something didn't work out or the location doesn't work out. Then the other two would fail within the next three years. So in five years, five restaurants have failed in technical terms. The restaurants that do survive a five-year progress eventually fade out by the seventh year this year. So we have a 100% failure rate <laughs> in our industry. The ones that have survived, you know, John Bishop, Prince de Grill, Chipinos, uh, Umberto's, myself, Tojo-san, are actually really fabulous restaurants. They do such a good job of you know, being institutions in that sense. So I must respect them. I give my hats off to them. Le Crocodile, for example, you know, Michel Jacob, a focused chef, does what he does, does well. And I think that's what the end effect of it is. It's not about the money that you're making. It's about the passion and the love that that person believes in, in his food. Whether he's serving steak, whether he's serving sushi, whether he's serving Korean food, the passion is the most important part. And that's what that's what carries you further. You just you just guaranteed that two hundred people are never going to open a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Middle. We noticed your last slide had gnocchi mushrooms on them, and we were wondering. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what that was. And the second thing is, do you draw from any other local cultures within Vancouver to inspire your dishes? So those enoki mushrooms that you saw were a, a brilliant garnish. I found they were really pretty. See, Indian food is delicious, but visually it's brown, dark brown, <laughs> yellowish brown. It's, it's, not, it's not that far. And we live in North America, and we must we enjoy beautiful things visually. We enjoy our food through what, what, what it looks like. Like if, if there was a photographer in the room, if you could photograph the smells of Indian food, you would have the best photographs ever. But you can't. If you actually look at Indian photography, it's kitschy and it's like everything has a cilantro on top of it because it's green. <laughs> so I wanted to create that style of enoki mushroom, so I went to some Japanese stores and I said, okay, well, or, you know, what, what, can I, what can I make it look a little bit prettier because this is a jackfruit dish. And so we created this cassava fries and enoki mushrooms and that was my own visually thinking of saying, you know, 
it, it is my own visual style of bringing it up. So yes, I draw enough. I used to do um, a salad dressing with Ponzi, like style of like the Japanese uh, vinegar, rice vinegars. <clears throat> We, we kind of we go back and forth sometimes. We'll use Israeli couscous, for example, or different kind of grains all the time that are still very Indian in the sense, but they're not just your typical. It's not a fusion. It's not, my restaurant is not fusion. It's just a more modern restaurant. It's not fusion. It's just not your mainstream. It's just not your butter chicken and your chicken tikka masala restaurant. But it is very Indian. It's authentic Indian or Indian. Authentic is is as Indian as it, it the restaurant is who I am as a human being I, I grew up in India I, I use my Indian spices I live in North America I love you know where we live and so bridging that gap is what the restaurant is all about there's another question awesome hello I'm Mara. I'm uh, part of the video and production team here at creative oh. mornings Hi. Um, I was just curious like you talked about how you want to take Indian food and sort of show, I guess, BC or maybe even sort of the world what Indian food really is. And yet, you know, there's Vidges, but, and you, you had the opportunity to go to Las Vegas or open a shop there. I was always curious, just like, don't you ever feel like, oh, I want to expand or, hey, like maybe we should open another restaurant to sort of, you know, show this area or maybe like Seattle, like what real Indian food is about? Or do you feel maybe that'll compromise the quality of the food? See, I don't know whether you notice, and I'm sure Allison will say that, I'm a little bit of a control freak. <laughs> so I love control. And that's the reason why I would not open up a restaurant in Vegas, because I'll spend more time on the plane coming and going and putting out fires rather than actually being here. The food cart, Rangoli, here are restaurants within the region where in an hour or an hour and a half from there, I can be there, whether it's in Cloverdale, whether it's in South Surrey or anywhere else. So it's not just about expanding the restaurants. I mean, please don't take this negatively, but restaurants are like human beings, you know? They need a lot of fucking attention. <laughs> and and you, can't just, you can't just open up a restaurant just because it's not a formula. You know, when you, you, when you press computer on a, on, a, on a computer, when you press enter, or this, it's the same command no matter what you do. Correct? Like you press enter, same thing happens. Whether it's an Excel formula or anything else from Whereas cooking is like, it's, it's your ha in your hand. Sometimes you add a little extra cumin. Sometimes you add a little bit of extra cilantro. The person who's cooking might be in a shitty mood or hates her mother-in-law or whatever, and then <laughs> adds extra chili to it. And then, <laughs> and then next thing you know, the dish is not tasting the way it is supposed to. In this way, I'm able to keep the control and the focus in my own city, and, and, I, and, I, and I love that. Okay, we have time for two more questions. I must give to you. I'm Sasha. Um, I just, um, I'm being a little bit nosy. I saw you a couple of weeks um, in Save On Meats with Mark Brand. And you were having dinner with him, I think. And um, I just got thinking um, what, what an interesting conversation you must be having after um, I saw your presentation. Um, uh, Save on Meats is very much socially aware in their business model as well. And their idea is not to ostracize the community that they reside in by um, including the community in their business practice. And um, yeah, I was just being nosy and wondering what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or what you might share that's in common or some kind of commonality. <laughs> I'm actually under, um, uh, what do you call that, a non-confidential clause. Oh, so sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I can't. I was there. You saw me just sitting with him at the end. Did you see any cameras there? No. Where were you sitting? Because when I left, there was only three or four people there. There were cameras everywhere. Okay. I can't tell you. <laughs> The mysteries, okay. All right, last question. So this better be good. Is it good? 
Really, you're pointing at her like hers is better? Okay, <laughs> get her. So much pressure now. Uh, we were just curious with this uh, very unique business model you have, or a uh, very positive business model of everybody being equals in the kitchen and in the front of house, is it difficult finding staff that are uh, willing to do that or that are at the right culinary skill level to participate and not have the egos get in the way? Um, in the kitchen, I have 400,000 Indians to draw from. <laughs> they live out in Surrey. So I really don't have an issue there. The way the kitchen works is my head chef, Amarjeet, she, is, she was a dishwasher at the restaurant when we first opened the restaurant 16 years ago and now she's the head chef of the restaurant and she's been with me for years and from day one. And uh, she, so when I tell her that I need some staff or I need to hire somebody else, she goes and handles all that. I don't, I, I don't go in there and mix and tell her what to do. So as far as the back of the house is concerned, it's completely taken care of. That's why I was saying they are my backbone, because I've really never had to deal with that. Miru has to deal with it a lot, but Miru is also kind of friends with them, so she, you know, she deals with it as it is. Front of the house, no, because I think there's enough people in here who love that equality and, you know, things will come up. I mean, you know, when you have two pots in a kitchen, they're going to make a little bit of noise. There's no question about it, right? I mean, even if, when you have a spatula and a, and, a, and, a, and a knife, it's going to scratch a little bit. It's going to make a little noise. And that's part of life. It's part of making sure that happens. But not really. I mean, I don't have a coup in, in the front of the house or anything like that. It's not like somebody's coming in, you know. We've had issues, there's no question about it. We have, in that sense, we're no different than that. I am a little bit of a hard, uh, you know, like I'm really hard on, on staff sometimes, but that's because of my old world training of school, you know, where chefs for us would like, you know, you, you, you've cut up onion there and the chef was, they were like mostly Austrian and French chefs, they were like really hard on us. So that, you know, you would be cooking and you're, you're chopping some onions and the onions were a little bit bigger and then they would just like throw at you and say, this is stupidly cut onions, right? <laughs> and then you would go around and gather and you have to start cooking and, you know, like, so it was really tough. So when you learn that, sometimes I get into that mode of that old, you know, old world, like I'll say something harsh and strong. But at the end of the day, I always say to my staff, you know, we are serving food. I mean, what's the worst that can happen to you, that your chicken was slightly overcooked? I mean, Jesus Christ, there are other things in the world to worry about than my chicken is a little overcooked or my hamburger is slightly burnt. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's, it's so relative, you know? I always say there's, there are more things to worry about in, in the world than my, my meal, my sauce was a little salty, a little fatty. Fuck, who cares? <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> Thank you.